Hello everybody, what is going on? This is Anthony with VR Game Rankings YouTube channel. And of course, this is the Daily Vlog Live. And it is 8 p.m. Pacific Time. It's actually 8.01 p.m. Pacific Time. A little bit late on the draw here. Uh, let me go ahead and copy my pop-out chat into the deal. Alrighty, so hopefully when chat actually gets going here, we will have you guys in there. Alright, like always, uh, just would like to do a quick video check, quick audio check. You guys can hear me. Um, everything's good, hopefully. And okay, so let's go ahead and let's see. Let me take a look at some of the news stories that are going on. Um, so basically the first news story we can go ahead and get into and, you know, not a lot of news stories really, but we can cover a couple of minor things and then we'll move on with that. But let's go ahead and start it off with Ubisoft. Of course, the Star Trek DLC is available today. Uh, this is on Steam and the Oculus Store. Now, I believe this DLC is $15. If you go to Steam, you can't really see a separate version of this. You got to go to like the Star Trek page and they have like a bundle. But if you already own this, then obviously you're going to get this at the discount and it should be about 15 bucks. I believe this has been available on PlayStation VR for a while. I think since May for 15 bucks, and then it's also on the Oculus Store, I believe for 15 bucks. But Oculus, you have to um, you have to go. There's a bundle page for it, and then I think you get the discount, which makes it 50 dollars. I did not see a separate section there for Oculus. Okay, Dave D says sounds good. Okay, so good to hear that I am live and in action of course you know one thing i was talking about yesterday is chat may be not very active because i have a huge listener base in the uk well not huge but a good percentage of my fan base seems to be based in the uk and it's like 4 a.m in the uk right now so i doubt we'll see any of the uk peeps hop on here so um, chat may be a little bit quiet. I was hoping that maybe there would be a bit more of a West Coast USA audience that could possibly show up. Uh, Central USA. Maybe some East Coasters that are doing some late night stuff. And, you know, maybe I have a listener in Hawaii. Maybe. I know there's a couple listeners in some strange places. Uh, viewers, listeners, etc. Charles Van Nolan just popped in. Yeah, he's actually a West Coast guy. I do know of a few West Coast guys that might hop into chat. Okay, but Star Trek Bridge Crew, so, you know, the DLC just came out. And I got to admit, I am one of the few people out there that has never, ever played Star Trek Bridge Crew. I haven't played it on PlayStation VR, have not played it on the Vive, have not played it on the Rift. Is there any reason why I specifically have avoided this game? No, it's not even uh, uh, the Ubisoft store and all that. Uh, it's not even that. Um, I mean, obviously, I probably would have been pissed off about that had I tried to start it up and it said that, you know, it's required and all that stuff, you play or whatever. Um, I probably would have been bothered by that, but I never even got that far. Um, I don't know. I don't know why I haven't played it. It's probably a cool game. I've never played Werewolves Within either. Um, I think the idea of being in a multiplayer game where you have like three or four people that are in this multiplayer game with you, if you have a good camaraderie and if everybody's cool, I'm sure it is really fun. Uh, the closest thing I've gotten to that is probably like From Other Sons playing in From Other Sons with other people and then being really cool and having a good time. I've had that happen for me. Uh, have not tried Star Trek Bridge Crew. It does look cool. Um, curious if anybody is picking up that DLC, but let me go ahead and 
see what other news we have. Oh, you know, Detached is available today for PlayStation VR, and I believe Detached is $24.99. I'm going to pop this trailer on and just check it out for a minute. Space is beautiful, but at one point or another, it will try to kill you. Warning, collision course. It will twist you, roll you, crush you. Suit. Damaged. Accelerate in a way that will suck your organs into your back. No oxygen. Or suffocate you. Suffocation imminent. But if eh, not the greatest trailer, that, right? Dialogue a little the real weak. Fun starts. Disruptor module active. Package collected. Package lost. Rocket pack active. Boost module active. Mission objective. Warning, collision course. Eject, eject, eject. Detached. Detached. Coming to a theater near you. Yeah, so Detached, you know, that game has been available on Steam uh, and Oculus, I believe, actually, for quite some time. And it's finally coming to PlayStation VR. And, um, you know, I don't know. I haven't heard much about this game on Steam or Oculus. I've heard people mention it here and there. It kind of appears to be like you're basically supposed to be in your spacesuit, but it kind of looks like you're almost in a little ship. The view that they give you there reminds me of Eve Valkyrie a little bit. Um, looks kind of cool. Looks kind of cool. Looking at the PSVR subreddit, though, let me actually go bounce over to the PSVR subreddit. I don't know that that many people have actually weighed in on Detached yet. Let me see if I can find out what people are talking about. Detached is my visit to the International Space Station Dream Come True. First impression. So this is by Nitoro. This is on the PSVR subreddit, and he's got a lot of upvotes on this thread. Um, one of the promises that sold me on VR is that I can experience things in VR that I might never get to do in real life. Among my friends, I seem to be the only one who would actually like to suit up and go into space and visit a space station and experience zero G. Um, Yeah, so I, I'm not going to read this whole thing, but it appears this guy does like this game. Uh, yeah, I mean, it looks all right. You know, looking at this trailer here, it looks all right. Uh, don't know if anybody out there has played Detached. All right. Um, just wanted to see other little minor news that we can talk about real quick. is Racket in X. And, you know, Racket in X is actually in the news for a couple of reasons. Of course, yesterday we saw that thread on the Vive subreddit where the developer, One Hamza, uh, was saying, what is the deal? Why will my game not sell? And everybody was really surprised that, you know, Racket in X did not have great sales. And we still don't really know, like, you know, maybe their definition of great sales, maybe they're a little aggressive on that. But this game's gotten a lot of, uh, a lot of people rant and rave about it. I'm kind of surprised it doesn't have good sales. I know it, it's a bit more pricey at $20, but it is on sale right now. At least it's on sale at Oculus. You can pick this up for 15 bucks, but it's free for the weekend and so it's definitely an opportunity to at least try it this weekend and it will be on sale for 15 bucks so that is racket nx um so yeah it's it's kind of funny that they were talking about that yesterday and now it is going to be free this weekend and so you know they're going to hope that some people jump on board of course um uh, all right, well, you know what? Why don't we go ahead and get into some talk about the persistence? Because basically, embargo is over. I can go ahead and talk freely about the persistence and really get into that. 
And so why don't we go ahead and do that? Let me go ahead and switch up the trailer here. And yeah, let's go ahead and get into the persistence. And you know, the first thing that pops to mind for me with the persistence is Sony. Sony has been a very, very lucky company. They really have. Because if you look at PlayStation VR, it's not like PSVR is getting like five big games every single month. You know, PSVR is getting a slow trickle of games. Can you change your live stream quality to 1080p? Hold on one sec. Uh, hmm, I don't know. I don't know why it's not outputting like that. But you know what? I'll look into that actually after the show just because I probably can't screw with that live. My bad. But yeah, so going back to the persistence and, and basically what I wanted to say here is like Sony, Sony has been incredibly fortunate that they've had some key developers really step up and deliver. And honestly, when it comes to the persistence, I would say this is another case where they've had a key developer really step up. And in this case, we're talking about Fire Sprite. I think they really stepped up with the persistence. Is the game perfect? No, absolutely not. But this game is $29.99, um, which I think is a decent price. And when you're in the game, it is incredibly visceral. The sound is really good. It's super intense. This game reminds me uh, a lot of Killing Floor Incursion when I first played Killing in Floor uh, Killing Floor Incursion on the Oculus Rift, I was kind of blown away by how intense it was. And this is an intense game. A lot of people aren't going to be able to deal with this game because you really have these intense one-on-one -on -one encounters. And then the other big deal with the persistence is the audio. If you pump up your audio when you play this game, and I highly recommend, you know, use some good headphones pump up the volume on this game, you will scare the crap out of you and you'll get a lot of immersion. And there's a lot of really good little sound effects whenever you're collecting things in the, in the environment. There's all these little noises, like when a door opens, there's a noise. There's a lot of little subtle sound effects in the persistence. Honestly, the star of the show for me is the sound. The sound design in this game is incredibly impressive. It is very, it'll get you on edge, you know. It'll definitely uh, get your blood flowing a little bit. Again, I said, you know, this is not for the weak of heart. And the thing about that is that's kind of dangerous for some of these companies, I think, because I think you have about a 20% portion of the VR audience that they just say no. You know, they just say no. They just, they don't want to deal with horror. They don't want to be made to feel like, holy shit, am I going to get freaked out by something coming around the corner? You know, there's a lot of people that just can't deal with that. Let me see if I can fix my chat because it's probably, okay, here we go. Yeah, that's probably good right there. Um, Yeah, so let's see. I actually had some notes written down about the persistence. I have some things that I love about it and things that I don't like about it. Okay. So the number one thing that I loved about it, I, I've talked about this is the audio design, you know, good headphones, loud volume. Oh, the other thing I wanted to mention, see Eurogamer was saying that maybe this game is scarier than Resident Evil 7, that maybe this is the scariest PlayStation VR game period and when I first heard that I thought really because Resident Evil 7 is freaking scary it really is and the one thing I will say though is the sound design in this game if you really have the volume pumped up it is very immersive and it is very visceral when you have that sound design popped up okay so let's go to the negative side of the coin I do have some things about the persistence that does bother me. And number one, without a doubt, is this HUD. Okay, so like your view, like right in front of you, you'll have a gun 
or some type of device that your right arm is holding and it's actually going to take up a good chunk of your view whatever you're holding in your right arm is going to take up a good chunk of your view and then over here on your left side you're going to see a hud that has these three indicators and then this little diamond like thing and I know the middle indicator is your health, and I think the bottom is how much like electrical charge you have for your like electrical charge gun that you shock people in the back of their necks. Or maybe it's for the, actually, you know what it probably is? It's probably for your shields. And then there's a meter up at the top. There's three things, and honestly, please let me get the let me get that hud off of the screen let me disable that hud because i feel like when i'm in the persistence i'm constantly seeing that hud it's in my way and it is bothersome i and i went into the menu and i went into the options and i tried to see can i remove that i couldn't find it anywhere so and as far as i can tell i don't think there is an option to turn off that hud and i don't understand why um, the D-pad, if you hit, I believe, right on the D-pad, you turn on your flashlight. Well, if you hit left on the D-pad, nothing happens. How about make left on the D-pad, turn that HUD off, disable that HUD, because then you can get more immersion in the game. So that is my number one bother, bothersome thing about the persistence. But you know what? Let me go ahead and give a little bit of audio to these, to these trailers. Let's check it out for a sec. If anyone is going to escape the persistence alive, it's going to depend on you. It's time to go. They got your host body. I printed you enough. Yeah, it, it's it's a it's an impressive game. You know, another thing that does bother me about the persistence, though, is you die a lot and it's a roguelike. So it's kind of like you're starting over and I feel like I'm spending a lot of time playing this game, but I'm not really getting anywhere in it, you know, because it's I, I don't know. It, it's it's a bit bothersome to me because um you keep kind of starting over and I don't I don't know what's going on but when I try to continue when I try to continue my game it's like I have to go through all these areas over again and I feel like I'm not making progress that's another thing I'd probably say bad about it okay let me go ahead and check chat here uh, hold on a second here Tom Lloyd says VR in the Samsung Odyssey is awesome, especially for the price. It has the same resolution as the Vive Pro, but it's only three ninety nine versus one grand. Uh, plus, no extent external sensors let you move everywhere. Yeah, you know, I mean, the Samsung of all the Windows Mixed Reality headsets, that's the one to consider. It is on sale right now at the Windows uh, at the Windows Store online. I'm assuming if you went to a Windows Store like their retail stores, you might be able to get it for $3.99 there too if they cover it there. Um, my problem with the Samsung Odyssey, well, I've heard that. I mean, that's the one that does have the legit IPG IPD ad adjustment, but I can't remember. Somebody was saying something about positioning the samsung odyssey on your head like to get a good view that i don't know there was some kind of downside somebody was talking about that that was concerning and the controllers their controllers the windows mixed reality controllers in general i think they need to improve at first glance it seems like it's a blatant ripoff of the oculus touch would be great if they melted in your mouth I melted in your mouth if they melted in your hands like the oculus touch controllers melt in your hands wonderful you know go ahead and copy go ahead and steal that design 
but they don't seem quite as comfortable and they seem really huge like they seem really big um but yeah the samsung is 399 it is on sale that's tom lloyd um yeah so you know back to the persistence though let me see some of the other things i wanted to talk about as far as a persistence oh you know another negative let's go back to the negative side for a sec here um why does the game not use move controllers because this is an incredibly immersive game and i will say that what you want to do if you're playing the persistence stand up stand up and hold your dualshock 4 controller out in front of you hit your select button hold it down for a couple of seconds so you dial in your view you might as well be standing up and the good news is fire sprite they have added a lot of options in this game so you can change you can dial in your viewpoint and your movement system the way you kind of want to do it and so you can do free locomotion you can walk around in this game which is really nice it works well but i think looking at games like the Solus project and a lot of other games on psvr it's been proven that you can have two move controllers and you basically take one and you kind of aim in a direction you hit a button and you go in that direction this is something that we've learned and I feel like this game would be considerably more immersive if it really had move controller support. And so it's kind of weird that it is a controller-based game. I don't know if anybody has anything to say. We don't have any PSVR fans in chat that are playing The Persistence. That is really unfortunate. See, this is the problem I get into by going to this uh, West Coast time. Okay, uh, what did I have else to say good about the persistence? Um, well, you know, one of the things I talked about is collecting the stem cells and collecting the fab chips and collecting your health packs and all the little things that you can collect in this game. And you can upgrade your weapons. You can get, like, these lances that you can smash people with. You can get a knife. You can get some different guns. The guns are kind of weird, though, because it doesn't really feel like, you know, it's almost like your gun is, like, stuck like this, and you got to move your view and then shoot your gun like that, where it's like, give me a move controller and let me move the gun. I think this game would be a lot better with a move controller, but it is still a, a solid game. Graphically, the graphics, I could go really negative on these graphics, and I could go really positive on these graphics because it's both it's both like when you're not really paying attention to the graphics and really looking at the detail it's pretty impressive if you really start to look at stuff uh, up close and personal if you get close to things you start to see that it's actually rather basic as far as like the graphics and stuff but at times it can look really good and fire sprite does a great job with lighting and shadow and the way they light the thing up and then the audio just adds so much to it that it it really is kind of like an event horizon kind of thing you know it's it's dead space that's the other thing that's the other positive that i have on here as you know what are the things i love about persistence this game is doing everything it possibly can to sound and look like dead space in fact there's a lot of little sound effects that are very similar to dead space you you look at different items and you open little doors and you lock on the items and some of those sound effects i'm telling you they remind me of dead space it's been a very long time since i've played dead space but I'm pretty sure some of those sound effects are very reminiscent of that. And just the visceral nature of it, and you're going down these dark hallways, anything can come around the corner. Now, if I want to go negative with, like, say, the gameplay, the enemies that I've dealt with so far is I've basically dealt with the basic zombie. The basic zombie guy is hella easy to deal with because all you got to do is let him get up on you and you time your shield and you activate your shield right when the right when the zombie is about to try to lay into you you activate your shield you throw him off balance a lot of times he flips over like that and anytime you can see the back of these bad guys 
usually there's like a red square in their back. You hit the red square and then you do like a basically a death move for these guys. Like watch, we might see a red square right here. Oh no. That's the companion app. There is a companion app that you can get for this like on Android and iPhone that probably would be pretty sweet. Um, that's something I might have to try with uh, one of my teenage sons actually screw around with that a little bit. But basically, okay, let's see what folks are talking about in chat here. Let me back up a little bit. Okay, Tom Lloyd says, That game persistence doesn't look that great to me, and I hate stuff being on the screen. Yeah, I mean, the HUD is a dud. The HUD is a dud. If you're into VR horror, though, and you're not playing the persistence, you're missing out a little bit. I uh, wonder if this game will ever end up on on oculus i i mean i i don't know if sony's directly publishing this or not it'll it'll never end up on oculus and, and steam if that's the case uh let's see somebody's talking about uh well kev Gret says his copy comes tomorrow did you buy a physical copy kev because, you know, physical copies, I mean, it is a nice thing to have a physical copy from the standpoint that if you get sick of the game, you can actually, like, sell it off or trade it or do something with it. Give it to somebody. Um, Tom Lloyd, my number one game used to be Onward. Graphics are the best, but Standout VR is my new number one, even with horrible graphics. Handguns, horseshoes, and hand grenades is fun for single-player gun fans. Yeah, I haven't tried. I mean, I've tried Onward when it had a free weekend, and that was pretty cool. That was enjoyable. Have not tried Standout VR. I've heard some people talk about Standout VR. Uh, yeah, Kev says, yeah, Best Buy has physical copies for sale. Yeah, I saw that. I mean, I still like physical media. Now, the ar obviously, the big argument against physical media is who wants to get up and eject a disc and put a different disc in that does seem very antiquated once you start getting these game codes you're used to just hitting buttons and bouncing between games very quickly um but when i in the early days when i had psvr i had gamefly and i was getting a lot of physical games and i actually had i had a couple physical games myself i had rush of blood i had batman that was a physical game i was playing uh journey um what do you call it? Robinson the Journey. I was playing that on a physical disc. I think I had rented Eve Valkyrie on a physical disc. So I actually had a lot of physical discs. And I I adapted to it. But it is a little bit of an irritation to swap discs. Okay, Antoine Cardi. Should I buy the PSVR over the Rift in HTC Vive? Well, that really comes down to do you already have a gaming PC? Because... If you already have a gaming PC, I would probably get a Rift or a Vive. Right at this moment in time, I would get a Rift for the controller. Um, if Vive had Knuckles, that would that would really complicate the situation. PSVR, though, can really hold its own. It is amazing how well the PSVR can hold its own. But I think from a tracking standpoint... A lot of PSVR games, because you only have that one single camera, a lot of developers have to assume that you're pretty much have to stand in one spot. And that can hurt PSVR in subtle ways in terms of the gameplay. Um, yeah, uh, Charles Van Nolan, ha ha ha, does Gamefly still exist? Yeah, can you believe it? Gamefly, well, Gamefly still exists because physical media still exists that's why gamefly still exists i mean you still have xbox one you still have regular playstation 4 you got all these flat gamers go to the grocery store you got Redbox right there i mean at every grocery store in america you can get your butter and your milk and any other groceries that you're grabbing and you can also grab a movie and you can grab the latest PlayStation 4 game or Xbox One game. And that's because physical media still exists. But how long will... Phys is this the end of physical media? Is this the last time we're going to have physical media? I don't know. It's going to be weird how that will play out. The Jordan Complex. How's life, bro? How's the job hunt? 
Well, the job hunt, I, I've kind of explained this a little bit, but I'm basically, I'm trying to create a new job. So I have a plan for a particular business that I hope to have operational in the near future. And so that's kind of the situation with that. Now, when that business is actually up and running, that could potentially affect this show. Although I should still be able to go live every day for a period of time, but I don't know about timing. That could be an issue. Uh, let's see. Oh, Tom Lloyd says they got rid of those boxes in my area in Florida. So Tom, you're saying you can't just go to the grocery store and also grab a Blu-ray movie on your way out with your groceries? Because those things are everywhere here in California. Basically red box but sometimes they're like some off-brand version of Redbox. Most of them are Redbox. The downside with Redbox, incredibly limited uh, variety. Like they'll only have like seven or eight PlayStation 4 games, seven or eight Xbox One games. And so if you don't like that specific game, you're boned. I actually rented Gran Turismo Sport. You know, I rented the physical copy of that when that came out at a Redbox to try just to try the VR version for one day and that's valuable to be able to do that because you know there isn't a demo of everything and so being able to rent a physical version like I wonder if the persistence now I haven't seen any dedicated um, VR only games at Redbox and that's going to be a long time before we'll ever see that um, okay, before I get off of the persistence, I just want to see if I wanted to say, yeah, basically I was going to call it, it's a little bit better than a poor man's dead space. So I was going to say, this is, I could say that it's a poor man's dead space, but actually I think I, it's a little bit better than that, which is impressive. And what, like what I was saying earlier, Sony is so freaking lucky because they always have the right game at the right time that really helps them out you know we got wipeout vr it was perfect timing for wipeout vr really helped playstation vr out then you got moss and it was perfect timing for moss and moss was a perfect game at a perfect time and then now we're getting and to the top to the top came out that was a wonderful situation for psvr now we get the persistence, and this is another high-quality game. I'm not saying it's like the best game out there, but it is definitely another high-quality game. I can't give any kind of final take on the persistence because I'm still very, very early on in this game. Um, oh, one of the negatives I did want to mention also in regards to the persistence is the scale. Like, you see your arms, and you see a gun, and you see stuff that you're holding in your hands, and I think the scale is about 20% off. Like it should be reduced by about 20%. Uh, that was one little tiny irritation. Charles Van Nolan, got to run to the store. Be right back. Yeah, he's going to go grab a 40. <laughs> uh, Gopher Chuck says, kind of like Dead Effect 2. Um, yeah, if you're talking about the looks of it, yeah, it is. It's And probably Doom VFR as well. I didn't play very much Doom VFR, but it does kind of have that look. Sound design really is where um, the persistence really steps it up in sound design. Okay, so, um, you know, let's go ahead and switch over to something else. One little video I wanted to show you guys. I've been looking up occasionally to, for some HoloLens stuff just because, you know, after being interested in Magic Leap and after... You know, getting excited about Magic Leap and Magic Leap's arrival and all the kind of hype that's going around with there. The HoloLens is a forgotten thing, you know, and the HoloLens is available right now. Now, of course, it costs three grand and no one in their right mind is going to pay three grand as a consumer to go ahead and grab HoloLens. But here's an example of something that can be done on HoloLens. This guy has basically gotten Street Fighter to run on HoloLens. He's controlling it with a PS4 controller. This is literally running on HoloLens, and it's pretty cool. If you go, if you guys watch this little uh, video here, we'll just let it play in the background. It's about a little two-minute video. And you can see Ry Ryu. Uh, obviously, you can see it's a little bit transparent, 
um, you know, so you can kind of see through the, the holograms, if you will, for lack of a better term. And obviously, with these HoloLens videos, it's not like we're really seeing where the boundaries are. Now, he's probably standing far enough back from this. Now, he's not got that whole thing in his view. We know that that is being cut off. So that's part of the downside when it comes to uh, when it comes to HoloLens, these videos actually probably make it look way the hell better than it is in real life. Um, but yeah, I like to, uh, I'm going to try to like s see occasionally if I can find something cool that's on HoloLens and maybe show a little video of it, give it a little bit of juice because we know HoloLens too is going to get into the mix and they could cause some problems for a lot of people. Okay, um, let's see. Tom Lloyd is saying, Magic Leap lied to us all about the quality. Well, I don't know that they actually lied because if you go back to those original videos, it said shot through Magic Leap technology. Okay, and if you look at their current videos, it says captured on Magic Leap 1. And there's a big difference between those two statements. We don't know what technology Magic Leap had that maybe they were unable to miniaturize. There is a theme and there is a theory that is very popular out there. It's a conspiracy theory about Magic Leap that the original technology that everybody was hyped on with Magic Leap, that they have not miniaturized that and that Magic Leap 1 really is a HoloLens Me 2. And so, you know, if it is a HoloLens Me 2, then HoloLens still has some value as well. And when Magic Leap releases, and they could release for, say, 2000 2500 who knows what kind of price Magic Leap will come out at. But the day Magic Leap is available is the day that Microsoft could drop their price on HoloLens to... $14.99.99. I mean, we don't know what's going to happen. Anything can happen. So it's interesting from that standpoint. Let me go ahead and check out what other news happened today. So I did hear about Disney has a VR short film called Cycles, which is going to debut in August at the Sagraf 2018 conference. There's also rumors that this is when Magic Leap is going to be released, that it's going to be released at this conference, which is in August. I've heard some rumors about that. Um, we've also heard, of course, about the refurbished Acer uh, Windows Mixed Reality Package for only $135. If you go to Acer Recertified Online, you will see that they have refurbished Acer headset packages for I think 150, but you can get another 10% off with this uh, coupon code, and it basically comes out to like 135 bucks, and that is hard to beat. But you gotta wonder why do they have so much refurbished stock? That's not a good sign because the way a company gets refurbished stock is they have a hell of a lot of returns, and I gotta imagine most of these Acers were probably bought on Amazon.com, returned to Amazon.com, and then maybe Amazon has a deal where they're like, okay, we're going to send these back to you, and then they get refurbished by Acer. It is a bit troubling that they have so much stock of um, refurbished materials. Okay, let's see what people are talking about in chat. And we have... Uh, Oh, the Jordan Complex says, just got to try HoloLens at the Microsoft Store. It's pretty ass. Ouch. Yeah, I mean, I can't say anything about it until I try it myself. I know the FOV is incredibly tiny. I do know that. Tom Lloyd says, the new video that is through the device is of the rock being thrown at the wall and broke. Yeah, of course. The Golem, the famous Golem video is what we're really getting. Um... It has been proven and disclosed that all their videos are all renditions. I don't know about that. I think that may be true for Dr. Grord's boards, but I don't know that that's true for that little guy that was uh, under the table, you know, that little weird uh, floating ball guy. 
I think that was like legit through Magic Leap technology, but probably the technology they haven't. Also, those planets moving around, I think that was legit. They can't advertise and say this was shot through Magic Leap technology and it be a complete and utter fake. They can't be like a... I mean, this is a real company. They can't do that. Like, they would be busted, I imagine. Um, yeah, so anyway... Uh, I just wanted to show a little bit of that Magic Leap stuff off. Let's see if we can switch up this trailer to something else. Not sure what else I've got on the docket. Uh, I'll throw back on this old Vive trailer. Got to give the Vive some love, you know. But yeah, so it's kind of been a light news day today. Let me go ahead and check all the various subreddits real quick. On the Vive subreddit here. Let me turn down the volume on that video. Okay, um, I'm on the Vibe subreddit, and the number one upvoted thread is Amazon now lets you finance gaming PCs and PC parts at zero interest. So, Anthony, why don't you finance an expensive-ass top-of-the-line PC and some expensive parts if it's zero interest I've always been the type of person, I want to save up the money I need to buy something and then buy it. Um, now, the fact that this is zero interest, that is actually, that is really nice. But I know that there's a lot of fine print that goes with that. And so I know it's zero interest for a certain time frame. And then if you eventually mess up, boom, you get hit with like major penalties, tons of interest at that point. So I don't really do that. I try to say I want to save my money up, buy the expensive item, deal with it, not really into the... Now, if they can give me a zero interest loan on Magic Leap 1, now we might have something Amazon. That's something I would want a zero interest loan on. Magic Leap 1 for $2,000. Absolutely. Um, Microsoft sale on the Windows Mixed Reality headsets. Yeah, there is a general sale. Well, really, you can get brand new versions of the Acer for $199, and you can get brand new versions of the HP for $199, and of course, Samsung Odyssey is on sale for $399.99. Uh, there is an interesting article that some of you guys might want to check out it's about how virtual reality could affect like consciousness or something. I've seen this on a couple of the subreddits. Hacking and experimenting with consciousness. Yeah, it's this article. It's called Virtual Embodiment. And it's by Joaquim Vind Vindanez, whatever. Um, but if you go to the, the Oculus Rift subreddit or the HTC Vive subreddit, and I think this is even in the PSVR subreddit as well, there's actually a link to this article, and it actually is quite interesting. It's talking about how when you're in VR and you're seeing body parts and stuff, how you start to like believe that that's your body part. And the thing is, is like we're on the we're like not even at the beginning of that. That's going to get so much better as the tracking and everything gets so much better and body scanning. We're eventually, let me talk to you guys a little bit about the future of our bodies in VR because it's only going to be a matter of time. We are going to be able to create realistic 3D models of our bodies um, by, getting, by putting a little green screen background and just taking pictures of ourselves from all these different angles. And it'll use AI and all that. And it's going to make a 3D avatar for us that's going to have our scars, hair that's on our arms, uh, just a mole that we have, maybe a mole that we have on our arm or just whatever. It's going to have all those little details. And then you're going to throw that in VR. And then we're also going to have some type of connect like external device that is going to track our body skeletons. And maybe we'll have something on our fingers, like gloves, like something on our digits. So these will be tracked. And they'll have enough tracking to put it all together. And we're going to be looking at our arms. We're going to be looking at our chest. We're going to be looking down at our legs. And it's going to look legitimately real. 
And oh my God, that is going to change the game. And this guy is talking about virtual embodiment, which is like how we can kind of, our consciousness can kind of get maybe uh, some weird stuff can happen if you really get involved in VR. Might want to check out this article, but this is one of these articles where you need to have a, a couple of, you know, you need to have like 15 minutes, have a nice cup of coffee, kick back, check out that article. Um, okay, let me bounce over to the Oculus subreddit real quick. Okay, before I do go to that, let me let me check chat real quick, see what everybody's saying. Um, okay, Charles Van Nolan, Magic Leap Tech implies just their light field displays. It doesn't mean that it's not being powered by a 1080 Ti. Yeah, that's that's certainly possible. Yeah, all it said was shot through Magic Leap technology, but it but I believe that that means that it had to happen. It had to happen in some way. So even if they had to use a 1080 Ti, um, that technology exists in some kind of form. Um, Gopher Chuck says, I'm doing the Gear VR lenses swap tomorrow. I got it for 20 bucks via Amazon and the adapters for 15 Man, good luck on that because doing mods like that, that stuff makes me really nervous. Um, Charles Van Nolen says, there's a thing called the rubber hand experiment, which demonstrates how you can be unconsciously fooled into feeling a rubber hand is your own. Yeah, the body transfer illusion, exactly. And that's what this article is all about. And it's a pretty detailed, interesting article. And I think if that is happening with VR, it's going to get so much worse or better, or however you want to describe it, as everything improves. Uh, Jason Seller says, how far are we from Ready Player One Tech? We're pretty damn far from that. We really are. Um, if I had to guesstimate when we would legitimately have the kind of tech that was in Ready Player One, in terms of the worlds looking as good as that, see, that's where I think we're really far away from. I think we will get into these online worlds with hundred, with thousands of people maybe, but they're not going to look like a freaking uh, Pixar cartoon. You know, that's that's not going to happen. And I don't know, man. I would, I don't, that could be like 2080 or something that we get to that as far as like Ready Player One like that. Uh, Tom Lloyd, Magic Leap blows our mind with its incredible technology that still doesn't fucking exist. Yeah, uh, well, I think it might exist but not in the miniaturized form that we know as Magic Leap 1. I think Magic Leap 1 is going to be a HoloLens competitor, and we're just going to have to see how much cheaper is it than HoloLens. Is it really a lot better than HoloLens? And HoloLens 2 is going to strike right around the corner, so you know it, it, it turns into a, a back-and-forth game between those two companies at this point. Um, Tom Lloyd says VR can help cure phantom limb pain. Yeah, that's something that they're looking at as well. And they're also talking about VR could be very powerful as far as PTSD, like treating people for PTSD. VR is going to be able to do a lot of interesting things. It's going to be able to relax people. I remember back in the days they used to say, if you got yourself an aquarium and if you just sat in front of an aquarium every day for just 20 minutes and watched the fish move around, that it could be so, uh, you know, it could really relax you. It could really calm you, and it's good for your overall health and all this stuff. Just imagine what we're going to be able to do in VR in terms of, like, pure relaxation and, like, calm type of stuff. We're going to be able to do some awesome stuff in VR. We already can, actually. Um so I'm looking at the Rift uh, subreddit here and just seeing if there's anything that jumps out at me. I didn't really see anything earlier today. Um, this one guy is saying, buying a Rift, do I need a third sensor? You pretty much do. I, I know there's a lot of people that say that they could take one sensor they could take two sensors and they could put them in opposite corners and angle them down at the very at the perfect way and maybe but you probably have to really dial it in really well 
Okay, another news story that is going on is Tested has a brand new video. They have hands on the Looking Glass holographic display. And I actually have some of those videos and stuff, but you know what? I'm going to talk about that tomorrow uh, just because I don't want to do a very long episode uh, tonight. I, I wanted to do kind of a short episode just to get out there, get a live episode out there, but that's pretty much it because we're already at 8.51 here. Um... If you missed out on Zing, don't miss Nog. Oh, that's Paradise Decay, our boy Paradise. Once again, the hardest working YouTuber, the hardest working man in showbiz, Paradise Decay. This guy plays everything. He reviews everything. I'm jealous, man. He got to check out Nog. Um, you know, because Nog is really colorful, really beautiful, actually. In fact, why don't I go and look? Let me, I can grab the Nog trailer real quick and we can check out the Nog trailer together because I'm pretty sure it is very colorful, very beautiful. Uh, let's see if I can find it. Double Fine Productions. I try to, try to find their newest trailer, most recent. Yeah, here we go, one week ago. So this is their newest trailer. Okay, and of course, I throw it into 4K Video Downloader, my good friend, and hopefully it'll work faster this time. I'll, uh, it's pretty slow, but it's going. Okay, I'll bounce back to chat. Um, the Jordan Complex. In Ready Player One, he was only using VR headset, haptic suit, and treadmill. I give it 10 years max. Nah, bro. No way. It, we're so far away. Everybody thinks like in five years, like radical changes, astronomical changes are going to happen in all these different fields. And I just think you guys are crazy optimistic. You know, Bill Gates has a statement where he said, what you think can happen in the next five years, you're overly optimistic. But what you think but what you think can happen in the next 10 years, you underestimate. It's something like that. It's a great quote by Bill, Bill Gates. And I think that quote holds up with a lot of this technology. What's going to happen in the next five years is not going to be that significant. This is all we want in the next five years is give us higher resolution, cut the umbilical cord, I mean, and maybe a little bit bigger FOV. I don't think you're going to get a hell of a lot more than that. I think more than that, you're being optimistic. Um, Charles Van Nolan is going to go play some Space Pirate Trainer. It's an oldie but goodie. You know, it might be an oldie but goodie, but it is polished. It is one of the most polished VR games I've ever played. Like Space Pirate Trainer, that whoever the developers are for that game they have polished it to the nth degree and oh my god it is so nice and polished much love for space pirate trainer and the devs there uh okay so what i wanted to do here is throw on this nog trailer real quick and i'll check out the sound too Yeah, now that's a cool trailer, super colorful, and I actually played a demo of Nog. I believe it was, maybe it was on one of the PSVR demo discs, maybe PSVR demo disc 2, but I know I played a demo of Nog, and it was very brief. It didn't really have a lot to it, but it was incredibly colorful, and basically there's just a lot of little things that you can kind of interact with, and you're just trying to figure out how to make something happen to kind of 
uh, move on to the next thing. But I really thought that Nog was kind of cool. Um, okay, so we'll hop back to chat. Um, a lot of people are talking back and forth about the Samsung Odyssey and whether or not it has good tracking. Yeah, I mean, the tracking... Honestly, I need to get my hands on some of these mixed reality headsets, try them for myself, know what the reality is. Because really, all of these headsets, they all have positives, they all have negatives, and you really got to be an owner, and you really got to get a feel for it to really know the positives and negatives. We're also talking about um, higher resolution headsets and how long that's going to take, wider field of view. Gopher Chucks is saying it's still eight, nine years out. Yeah, I, I just think this stuff takes a while, man. I, I really wish. Um, we'll see. You know, we got to see what Oculus CV2 comes out with. And we got to wonder when HTC Vive is going to have a legit Vive 2. Because I don't think the Vive Pro is really the Vive 2. Maybe if the Vive Pro had knuckles from the very beginning, it would kind of seem like a Vive 2. Um, but I don't know that the resolution bump is high enough. Of course, you go to a high, you know, we go to these higher resolutions, you're going to need that new output. You know, you're going to need a new kind of cord to be able to deliver that. And so then we get into the chicken and egg game of do you have the newest graphics card that has that adapter on it? That's going to be a whole nother ball game as well. Um, so let me check the PSVR subreddit. Didn't check that before we bounce out of here. Okay, yeah. So on the PSVR subreddit, there's, you know, they have they're talking about detached and everybody's talking about persistence. A lot of people are talking about persistence. They're also talking about Star Trek Bridge Crew. They're basically saying, welcome PC players. We've had this DLC now for a couple of months. And they're, they're actually hoping that a lot of PC players means they're gonna have the ability to uh, get into games a lot easier. Uh, this one guy is saying persistent feels more solid snake than RE7. And yeah, you do kind of, if you want to survive in the persistence, you really do want to sneak up on the bad guys. You really have to do that. Um, another guy saying, I just bought persistence. I want to support awesome developer that brings dead space like experience to virtual reality. It is very dead space like. It's really about as close as they can get to dead space without a lawsuit. You know, I mean, it really is very close to dead space. Um, those of you that are in the UK, Static for PlayStation VR is on sale. Uh, it's six and a half pounds. And if you have PlayStation Plus, 4.89 pounds. So that is Static. And I honestly, so it's 69% off its normal price in the UK. And personally, I will say Static, easily, easily one of the like the 10 best VR puzzle games. And that is high praise when you have Zing and you have Talos, uh, the Talos principle, and you have, there's a lot of, you have Form and you have like Super Hypercube. I mean, there's a lot of puzzle games in VR that are very good and Static belongs in the top 10. And that is a, a PSVR exclusive. See, games like Static, is kind of why you have to have a PSVR. Um, that's why, you know, I know there's a lot of PC VR players that, you know, they get by without a PSVR. And I understand it, you know, because it's, it's an expense to grab a PSVR. But you know what, if you have kids or something, it's kind of cool to have another VR setup in another room. And if you go the used route, if you go to Craigslist, and you're willing to take one of the original versions of PSVR, people are practically giving those things away with like move controllers and extra games and all kinds of stuff. So you, so if you're willing to go second hand, you can get a PSVR for hardly nothing. Uh, anyone else feel that all the talk of the persistence is much scarier than RE7 is overblown? Yeah, I mean, it's 
it's overblown. It, it really is overblown. I will say the audio, though, is fantastic. The audio in the Persistence is fantastic. If you have the audio really loud, it is incredibly scary. But I still think RE7 is more scary. But I'm still early in the Persistence. I don't know. Maybe I'll get farther in it and change my mind. Okay, let's go back to chat. Uh, Minister James Bergen. Yes, you pay a little more for a third center, but it is very worth it. Yeah, I mean, a third sensor is worth it. I would like to try just getting by with two sensors and just doing that corner trick and see if I can really get away with it because that would be kind of cool. But you might as well have a third sensor. Um, and honestly, what I recommend is if you're going to get a third sensor, get a touch package that comes with a third sensor because then you're only paying $40 extra for a backup pair of controllers. And, you you know, if you ever need, I mean, it's just I have a backup pair. That's what I did to get another sensor. I ordered another touch package. I just thought it was worth it to pay 40 more bucks and get some backup touch controllers just in case. Gopher Chucks is saying, can you run four sensors? Yes, you can, and I have four. I have one right there, one there, there, and there. I actually have four sensors. I need to fix them a little bit, though. I think I need to angle, angle them down a little bit better. Um, Gopher Chucks is saying, we can't on the Vive. Yeah, well, the new Vive sensors uh, the 2.0 sensors, eventually you're going to be able to daisy chain a bunch of those together, right? Didn't they do this video where this guy walked from one room to another room to another room and he was being tracked? Um, he had a long cord connected to his Vive and he like walked into three different rooms. There's a video out there where they have that guy walking around. It's pretty cool. All right, guys. Well, you know what? That's going to go ahead and pretty much wrap it up for this show. Kind of a... You know, I don't know that this was the most exciting episode that we've had on the Daily Vlog Live. And, um, you know, but I do appreciate everybody that show, that did show up in chat because thank goodness, thank goodness we had some people showing up in chat. A little bit lighter today. I think the earlier time slot is a great time slot. And I only did this time slot because I was completely unavailable to do it any earlier today and i want to just keep doing a live show every day um you know i'm hoping to do a live show every day jason sellers is saying why did you get rid of your vibe so what happened is one of my lighthouses died and i didn't want to buy a new lighthouse this was way before we heard about the htc vive pro and i had a strong feeling that there was going to be a new Vive headset, and I thought maybe it would have Knuckles and all of this. This is many, many months ago, and obviously completely off the mark. And what happened was I sold off all of my Vive stuff that I ended up having left over. I parted like every little bit of it out, and the idea was I was going to take that money and I was going to use it to buy the next great Steam VR headset. I thought LG was actually going to have a headset too, and I thought LG might have the knuckles. And so I was setting that money aside for that, and then ultimately we got the HTC Vive Pro, and I was like, with the old Vive Wands, and I was like, nah, that's not quite good enough. It's not quite good enough. And so I just have not bought another Steam VR headset. I still... I definitely want to get into the Steam VR game again. I do. I do want to get back to Steam VR and have that option. But I want to get in with the 2.0 lighthouses and I want to get in with Knuckles. And I would like to get in with a headset that is even better than the HTC Vive Pro. So I'm still hoping, I'm still hoping LG, you know, because LG, when they were at the Las Vegas Consumer Electronics Show, LG made no mention whatsoever of VR. It was really bizarre. And it kind of leads me to think that they had to postpone a certain situation. And maybe LG 
You know, maybe that LG thing can still happen because remember when Gabe was sitting at that table and they were talking about all the VR stuff? He was talking about how in 2018 there's going to be these new headsets. Well, whatever happened to that? You know, Pimax is really the only new headset we're going to get this year. Um, but anyway, guys, I definitely need to bounce out of here. So I'll go ahead and uh, put on my little trailer to bounce out. All right, so that's going to basically go ahead and do it for Daily Vlog Live. Of course, this was VR Game Rankings Daily Vlog Live. I believe this is episode 157, maybe. But uh, anyways, I will be back tomorrow, 10 a.m., normal time, normal bat channel, and I'll see you guys then. So take it easy. Later.